Coffee Break German Season 3, Episode 4. Herzlich willkommen zurück zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Und wie geht es dir heute? Mir geht es fantastisch, Marc. Und dir? Ja, mir geht es gut, aber ich bin ein bisschen müde. Ach, hast du nicht gut geschlafen? Äh, nein, weil ich zu viel äh, gearbeitet habe. Genau. Bist du spät ins Bett gegangen? Ja, ich bin, <lacht> ich bin spät ins Bett gegangen und ich bin äh, früh aufgestanden. Genau, sehr gut. Ja, ich bin früh aufgestanden. Oh dear, one day I'll be confident enough to just come away with a, a, a happy a happy answer to your questions, Andrea. Of uh, course. What are we talking about today? So today we're going to speak about the past tense, mm -hmm. but not the perfect tense, but the imperfect tense. Right, so this is the preteritum. Genau, ja. Now we have done this before, haven't we? Yes, exactly. So we have looked at the preteritum uh, für haben und sein and for the modal verbs. Right, but not really other verbs, regular verbs and irregulars, I suppose. Yes, exactly. Because uh, the modal verbs and haben and sein, we hardly use in the perfect tense. Mm -hmm. So we always use them in the imperfect tense. So we looked at these, but obviously... Other verbs also have impact, imperfect tenses, and we're going to look at the regular verbs today. Okay, that sounds good. Now, some of what we're doing in these early lessons of Coffee Break German Season 3 is, in a sense, review of what we've already covered, but we're certainly getting into it in more detail, and it's all, in a sense, breaking us in gently for what's coming in the next genau. few lessons, isn't it? Genau, das ist richtig. Ja. Also, bist du bereit? Ich bin bereit. Los geht's. <lacht> So, Mark, what do you remember about this tense, the imperfect tense or the preteritum? Well, I think we talked about um, the fact that we use it when we're speaking really only with certain verbs. So, um, we've already mentioned haben and sein, uh, and then our modal verbs, können and uh, dürfen and wollen and so on. So, ich wollte something, something. Um, but am I right in thinking that we don't really use normally in spoken German uh, the other verbs in the preteritum. Well, then we wouldn't need to learn it. Okay. You know? <laughs> but we do. So we use the imperfect. We can use it also in spoken language when we, for example, tell a story mm -hmm. or uh, want to uh, speak about something in the past and make it more memorable, more dramatic, more romantic, something like this. Yeah. Okay. So it's more epic. Yeah, okay. when we use it uh, in the preteritum. And very often when we write stories, for example, mm -hmm. we would write them in the preteritum. So not only is it useful to recognize these verbs, it's also useful to be able to use them. Hence the reason for this lesson today. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So um, you said um, you remember some of the modal verbs. Mm -hmm. In the preteritum, obviously, they are irregular mm -hmm. and you just had to study them. Yep. Yeah. And haben und sein. Uh, do you remember how to make the preteritum in haben? Okay, that would be ich hatte, du hattest, uh, sie es hatte, mm -hmm. uh, wir hatten, ihr hattet, sie hatten. Sehr gut. Und für sein? Um, so I was, ich war, du warst, uh, sie es war. Wir waren, ihr wart, sie waren. Ja, sehr gut, bravo. And let's uh, pick out some of the modal verbs. So I'll mm -hmm. give you the person and the verb and you give me uh, this in German. Okay. For example, um, let's use we had to. So we're looking at müssen mm -hmm. um, and that would be wir... Uh, is it müssten or mussten? I think it's mussten without any words. Ja, right. genau. Ja. Okay. So, wir mussten. Wir mussten. Zum Beispiel, wir mussten Hausaufgaben machen. So, we had to do our homework. Genau. And then maybe du. 
ja, so the singular you, um, with dürfen, so we're allowed to. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be du dürftest? No umlaut. Ah, dürftest. So is that a, a, is that something that's a bit of a pattern when we've got a, an umlaut in the in the infinitive and the umlaut comes out in the the conjugated preteritum? Yes, with the modal verbs definitely. So können, müssen, und dürfen have an umlaut, but when it's conjugated, they don't. Okay, so du dürftest. You were allowed to do something. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example. Du dürftest Schokolade essen. So you were allowed to eat chocolate. Genau. Okay. Richtig, yeah. And uh, let's look at können. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we use they, so sie. Sie konnten. Genau. Zum Beispiel, sie konnten Fahrrad fahren. So they could go on their bikes, they could cycle. Genau, sehr gut, super. And let's look at wollen, yeah, to want. And uh, we haven't had ich. That would be ich wollte. Genau, zum Beispiel, ich wollte ins Kino gehen. So I wanted to go to the cinema. Uh, what then about regular verbs? Because I'm, I'm seeing, I, I know particularly with the modal verbs, we've got this konnte, contest, konnte, konnten, konnte, konnten. Are we following a same pattern there for regular verbs? Yes, so the ending pattern remains the same. Mm -hmm. um, so we will recognize them as, as from the same group mm -hmm. uh, or the same tense, but the stem is different, so the root is different. And what we use in the regular verbs is that we use the, the root from the present tense. And I'm going to give you an example with mm -hmm. fragen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to, to ask. Yeah. And what is the root of fragen? Well, we take off the, the en of the infinitive and we're left with frag. Genau, sehr gut. And then we add the preteritum endings to it. And it's uh, ich fragte. Ich fragte, so I asked. Genau. Du fragtest. Du fragtest. You asked. Er, sie, es fragte. So, er, sie, es fragte. So, he, she, it asked. Mm -hmm. Wir fragten. So, wir fragten. We asked. Exactly. Ihr fragtet. Ihr fragtet. Um, that's you, plural, asked, informal. Mm -hmm. Und sie fragten. So, sie fragten, uh, they asked, or of course, sie fragten in the formal, you, uh, you asked. Okay. Genau, sehr gut. So, do these endings work for all regular verbs? Yes, almost. Okay. Of course, uh, we have some exceptions, yeah. uh, but it's something that we know well. Uh, and um, so the verbs ending where the root ends in a T mm -hmm. or a D, yeah. Yeah? Uh, for example, arbeiten, so yep. the root is arbeit. And if we then just add the, the ending we've used so far, we would say, ich arbeite. Yeah, that's and not that very obviously nice. doesn't sound so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you think we do here? Well, could we add in that extra e the same way as we would do in, in other situations? So ich arbeitete. Yes, that's exactly right. So okay. we do the same in the present tense. So uh, er, we don't say er arbeitet. We say er arbeitet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we add this extra e, uh, and it's the same with baden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ich badete. Ich ba badete. Ich badete, nicht? Ich badete, ich badete. Ich badete, du badetest, er, sie, es badete, wir badeten, ihr badetet, sie badeten. Yes, Good. yes. Okay. Okay. So another verb where this happens is, for example, regnen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we have the gn, we have a consonant and an n ending mm -hmm. in the root and if you just think about it, if I then say, es regnet, yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, so we would say, es regnete. So it rained or it was raining, es regnete. Yes, 
Exactly. Okay. And uh, when we look at Schneien, Mm -hmm. uh, that is actually completely regular, but I still want to point it out. So Schneien, we have a lot of vowels there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if we then take away the E-N, it's Schnei. Yeah. And that's completely regular. So it's Schneite, uh, oh, okay. it's Schneite because other. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> snow. <laughs> you don't snow. Yeah, es Schneite, es regnete. Okay. Yeah. Es Schneite, es regnete. Okay. Could we do some uh, some trials of some conjugations here? Can you give us a verb to conjugate? And we'll give our listeners some time to think about this. Um, and then I'll try doing the conjugations. Yes, we can practice with the verb wohnen. Mm -hmm. That's very regular. And I think I'm just going to give you the English and then uh, our listeners and yourself, you can uh, give me the German. Okay, yeah? so are we going to go through each of the parts? We're actually going yes. to conjugate the full verb. Okay, so wohnen to live. Let's do this in the preteritum. So, I lived. That would be ich wohnte. Sehr gut, yeah. You lived. Du wohntest. He or she or it lived. Er, sie, es wohnte. Sehr gut. We lived. Wir wohnten. Mm -hmm. And you plural. Ihr wohntet. And then we have you formal. Sie wohnten. Genau. And they lived. That would also be sie wohnten. That's correct. Very good. Well done, okay. Mark. So, for example, uh, vor 20 Jahren wohnte ich in Zürich. Right. So, 20 years ago, I lived in uh, Zürich. We could also translate this as I was living in Zürich, couldn't we? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, or even I used to used live. To live. So. Yeah. If you've come across other languages, if you're used to learning French, for example, then um, the, the, the preteritum is like the imperfect in its use um, in the sense that we can use it with I used to live, I was living. Um, would it also work in that kind of sense of when I was young, I, I would visit my grandmother every Saturday morning? Ja, so besuchen, very nice, regular, okay. So als ich jung war, which has the lamb, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also als ich jung war, besuchte ich meine Großmutter jeden Sonntag. Yeah, so uh, when I was young, I would or I used to visit. It's just that idea of using would as I used to rather than would as a conditional, which we'll get into another time. Um, but yeah. Good. Genau. So we use the imperfect also when something happens regularly. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Let's do another conjugation practice, mm -hmm. Mark. Uh, this time with a verb like arbeiten or, or baden, where you need to insert the E. Mm -hmm. And I have a very nice one and it's begleiten. Do you know what this means? Begleiten. Um, I've heard it, but I'm not quite sure what it means. Sorry. It, it is to accompany. To a company. Okay, so, um, right, will we go through each part again? Yes, yeah, so I accompanied. Ich begleitete. Mm -hmm. You accompanied. Du begleitetest. Yeah, sehr gut. Uh, he, she or it accompanied. Er, sie, es begleitete. Mm -hmm. Und we accompanied. Wir begleiteten. Sehr gut. And uh, you plural accompanied. Ihr begleitetet. Super. And you formal accompanied. Sie begleiteten. And they accompanied. Of course, sie begleiteten. Very good. So what is interesting about begleiten is um, that it goes with an accusative. For example, um, wir begleiteten 
ihn nach Hause. So that would be uh, we accompanied him to his home, to home. Ja, genau richtig, sehr gut. So I think what will help with these preteritums is if we see them in some context. And I think that's what's coming up after the break. Ja, ich denke, das ist eine gute Idee. Also, bis bald. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Today we are looking at the Preteridum, or the imperfect tense in German, and uh, we are going to be listening to a, a, a diary entry now, I believe. Ja, genau. Einen Tagebucheintrag. Okay. And what we should do as we listen is listen out for some of these regular imperfect tenses. That's certainly what I'm going to be listening to. Yes, very good. There are a couple of irregular ones from haben und sein and the modal verb. So listen out for these two. Okay. Let's take a listen now. Liebes Tagebuch. Endlich habe ich wieder etwas Zeit für dich. Die letzten Tage waren sehr anstrengend und ich hatte so viel zu tun. Am Dienstag holten Thomas und ich die Schlüssel für unsere neue Wohnung ab. Wir freuten uns schon so lange auf unser neues Zuhause, aber wir waren alles andere als begeistert, als wir den Schlüssel drehten und die Tür öffneten. Die Wohnung war so schmutzig, dass wir erstmal Putzmittel, Lappen und einen Besen kaufen mussten. Zum Glück hatte der Supermarkt um die Ecke alles, was wir brauchten. Wir putzten stundenlang und füllten mehrere Müllsäcke mit Krempel und Müll. Wir fühlten uns total veräppelt von der Agentur und dem Vormieter. Thomas telefonierte mit der Agentur, aber die Maklerin wollte uns nicht helfen. Also machten wir alles selbst. Am Abend waren wir natürlich fix und fertig und gönnten uns eine Auszeit mit einem Bierchen und einer Pizza auf unserer neuen und sauberen Terrasse. Von dort oben beobachteten wir das Geschehen unten auf der Straße. Menschen spazierten auf der Straße, manche schauten in die Schaufenster der Läden und im Park tanzten zwei Leute zur Musik die man von einem Gartenrestaurant hörte. Genau so stellten wir uns das Leben in der neuen Wohnung vor. Die letzten zwei Tage räumten wir dann noch alle unsere Möbel und Sachen aus der alten Wohnung. Diese musste nämlich gestern Abend leer stehen, da die neuen Mieter heute einziehen wollten. Wir arbeiteten wirklich fast pausenlos, verpackten alles in Kisten und transportierten diese mit dem Lieferwagen durch die Stadt. Jetzt ist alles fertig und wir machen erstmal eine wohlverdiente Woche Urlaub auf Balkonien. Okay, so we were listening to a diary entry there of someone who by the sense of things has been moving flats. Ja, genau. Richtig. And it didn't go so well. The first part certainly didn't seem to go so well. I think there was a lot of, um, well, it was very schmutzig when they got there, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So they uh, got the keys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on Tuesday, they got the keys for their new flat. Uh, and they were really looking forward to their new home. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it was very dirty and they had to go and buy lots of cleaning products and clean for hours. Yeah. And they felt... Very much for Appelt. For Appelt. Yeah. Uh, it's something to do with being tricked or something like that. Yes, it means that someone has taken you for a ride. Right, okay. Okay. <laughs> and it was, in fact, the Agentur. 
Ja, die Agentur and the Vormieter. The Vormieter is the previous tenant. Right. So they were the, the, the people who left it dirty and then the Agentur didn't do anything about that. That's right. Yes. Okay. So in the end, they got everything sorted out and they had a nice pizza on the on their terrace, on their balcony, and uh, that was very good. And then they had to go into their old flat yep. and tidy everything up. And now they're enjoying their new home and their holidays auf Balkonien. Do you know where Balkonien is? Um, well, I thought it was something to do with the balcony. Yes, so we say a st- it's a staycation. A staycation, right. Okay, so you can go out onto your balcony and enjoy the, the city or the, the town, um, yes. but you're doing it from home. Yes, and we're calling it Balkonien. So where are you going this holiday? Ah, Balkonien. I get it, yeah. right. It's and it's a staycation. Words. Excellent. Now, we're going to go through this whole uh, text in in greater detail in our bonus episode. Um, And that's part of the premium materials of Coffee Break German Season 3. So if you're already using these, then you can go straight on and enjoy that and use our notes, obviously, that will help you understand everything. And there's also our translation challenges to look forward to, too. If you're not yet using this, head over to coffeebreakacademy.com where you'll be able to find the course for Coffee Break German Season 3. Andrea, is that it for today? Not quite, Mark. We have noch eine Kleinigkeit. Okay, so what do you have for us today? So today I have something that I think is very cute and it uh, means to be very excited. Yeah, ganz aus dem Häuschen sein. Okay, so ganz is like really aus dem Häuschen sein, out of the little house. Yes. So I have no idea why. Okay. <laughs> so ich, oh, ich bin ganz aus dem Häuschen means I'm very, very excited. Right. So I can just say ich bin ganz aus dem Häuschen, and that genau. means I'm excited. Excellent. Also ich bin ganz aus dem Häuschen. Uh, weil wir etwas Neues gelernt haben. Sehr gut, Mark. Das freut mich. <laughs> we'll be back soon and we'll be learning even more in our next episodes. So until then, vielen Dank und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis bald. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved.